to show you a few tips and tricks that can help you determine if a patient's symptoms are primarily psychogenic in origin. Background. It's pretty common for patients to show up in the ER with psychogenic conditions that can closely mimic very serious medical conditions. Most of these patients aren't lying, but they're expressing psychic distress in a physical manner. You do the same thing when you get anxious and you bite your nails or run your fingers through your hair. You don't need grooming. You're not faking that you need grooming. It's just something you do when you're stressed. There's real danger here for the patient and for you. Many of our tests and interventions carry significant risks for patients. And if the patient doesn't need them, you shouldn't do them. On the other hand, what if you blow it off as a psychiatric condition and you're wrong? That could end disastrously for both of you. Patients can have psychological and medical problems at once. You've got to be careful. I'm going to show a few tricks I've seen other people use to figure this out. Patients who show no signs of awareness or ability to move could be having a really serious medical problem, and you need to figure out quickly if there's a psychological component. You can do this by applying an unexpected and unpleasant low-risk stimulus to the patient. Start with the sternal rub, of course, but don't be too delicate. Really get in there. Wake up! If you need something better, you can try a gloved finger in the nose. Apply nail bed pressure. Squirt a saline flush right in their face. Or use smelling salts. If you stimulate the patient and they react vigorously, it suggests that their unresponsiveness is due to a psychological problem more than a medical problem. They still could have active medical issues, but that's probably not what's making them unresponsive. Be thorough. You can also try this hand drop test. If the patient's hand misses their face every time, that means that they are aware at some level and are taking action to protect themselves. If their hand hits them right in the face, then it's more likely that they really are paralyzed or comatose. You can also try a cognitive test. Do you need pain medicine? Uh, oh, yes, I love it. Give the patient a good reason to respond to you, and you'll be amazed sometimes. Pain pills. Another tactic is to say this with an earshot of the patient. Okay, nurse, if this guy doesn't start improving in the next minute or two, just put a catheter up his penis so we can get a urine specimen. Thanks. Once in a while, all of a sudden, the patient will begin to wake up after hearing this. Just be careful not to use medical terms like Foley because the patient won't know what that means. Distinguishing epileptic seizures from psychogenic non-epileptic seizures deserves special mention. It's not perfect, but some features are more suggestive of a psychogenic cause of seizure-like activity. You can also try the same noxious stimuli that you would with an unresponsive patient. If they react vigorously and the seizure stops, this makes a generalized epileptic seizure very unlikely. But it does not exclude partial seizures or postictal states, so be careful. Uh, no, it's no. not moving. Okay, how about your elbow? Try that. Uh, I can't get it to move the whole arm. Okay, okay. If the patient states they're completely unable to move a limb at all, you can try the sudden drop test. If you hold their arm up and then suddenly let go and it doesn't fall down immediately, the patient does have some strength. Okay, I want you to try moving your knee for me. I can't, it won't move, I can't move my leg. A distracted pinprick really can help you see if a limb is truly paralyzed. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Can you feel this? No. How about this? No. If the patient states they have no sensation in a part of their body, you can have them close their eyes and then do a Simon Says approach. This? No. This? No. This? No. This? No. 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 If they know when no. to say no without you prompting them, they can feel something. Can you read this? Sometimes patients will state they've suddenly lost the ability to see. They need a thorough workup no matter what you suspect. If you do notice the patient using their cell phone or they've signed the consent to treat form perfectly right on the line, they probably can see more than they're saying. 
You can try using an optokinetic drum app on your phone, and I've also seen this work. No. Can't see it at all? No. Okay. How about this? Oh, I can't read it. Can't read it? I can't too, read that. Too, too blurry? Yeah, I can't see it. Okay. All right. How about this? Why would I lie about something like this? That brings us to ethics. Decide for yourself if you think these tricks are right or wrong. The rules I use are as follows. Is what you're doing going to help you reach or exclude a diagnosis? Are your actions helping you to reduce risks to the patient? Things such as radiation exposure or adverse medication reactions or painful or dangerous procedures? Are you telling the truth? Are you really going to catheterize that patient if they don't wake up? Are you being thoughtful? Do you have a diagnostic plan? Are you at least aware of your emotions in this case? Are you open to the possibility that you're wrong? If you can answer yes to all of these, you're probably in good shape. If you feel that some of them cross the line, you may be able to make small adjustments and get yourself out of that gray zone. Good luck.